Almost ready? Yeah, dimmer. All good? Yeah. Right, fantastic. Guys. So, right, guys, so to cover what we're going to do next, seen as a. Shut up, Charlie. <laughs> so, what we're going to do next, I think, seen as a lot of you guys are not quite there with your offer yet, right? And I mean, David, the you know, offer of what you're going to do, who's it going to help, blah, blah, blah. Steph, a little bit as well. Dude, certainly, certainly the case for you. Dimmer a little bit, Ian a little bit, Mark. I think I think this is going to really help you as well, Mark. Okay. Yeah. I think it's Mike. Mike for sure. Um, David, the absolute boss. Alex, the absolute legend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I had the privilege of like working with you know Sam and Consultant.com, and that means because we have twenty five thousand clients, right? Like a lot of clients all in different niches, all in different industries, all in different spaces. And I work with thousands of people in all those different areas. And so it became apparent to me a few things uh, for when people are getting started in order to get it to work. They were usually making a lot of mistakes in, in these areas that I have here. But the reason I wanted to talk about this is because a lot of people have brought up offer. What am I going to offer the marketplace? What should I charge it at? You know, all this kind of stuff. So. I can promise you guys now, I've helped people go from zero to 350,000 in their first month. Guaranteed. I can tell you the names of all these people. A lot of them you're familiar with as well. So I'm going to cover a lot of good stuff for you guys and what the mistakes are. But we'll just start with this sentence that Sam used to teach everyone. And I want everyone to do this even if you have a business already and you already have an offer. Because what Sam used to do, okay, I feel like Sam just wants to say yeah. <laughs> What Sam used to do is every 12 months he used to come back in with the team. And we used to sit down in the meetings, and he used to actually go through this again with us every single time. Because what happens is your market will change. Right. Every year your market changes. The message is going to need to change. And so he used to come and say, hey, what's happening over the phones? Who are the people that are buying from you? Uh, so right now, uh, for the individuals that are trying to come up with, hey, what is it that I want to, what's the problem that I want to solve? Just ask yourself, I help XYZ person to do XYZ or solve the XYZ problem, and I do it, and I help them to do that by doing XYZ thing. It's a very simple concept, but I'm going to get real deep on that line for you yeah. because you see, because I'm a sales guy, I see everything as a nail. That I'm you can take this and turn it into five different things for the for the same market. Okay, but I think just take a minute, everyone, to narrow down to the 80% of the people who buy from you. Who is that person? If you're an agency owner, as well, I can help you do this real easily as well. So, who do you help? And I'm going to tell you what consultant.com was for up level. Okay? I help coaches and consultants to scale to seven figures by productizing their offer. Very, very simple. But what that does for me and our team is we were able to narrow down very much on the uh, messaging in our marketing and exactly what the sales process would look like just from that one line. And you'll be surprised, you think you know what it is, but you don't. You actually don't. That's why every 12 months you would come back and say, okay, we've got to look at this one more time. So just take, a, just take 60 seconds, maybe we'll go around the room as well. Yeah. I think, because a lot of people like, I do this, I just, no, you just do this, that's all you do. That's okay, amazing. you can narrow it down, so let's take a second there to, to write down what that is. And I think we'll just start with the people who are trying to figure out what their offer is, especially David, maybe Mark, Bo, Vince as well. So the buying part is that your differentiator, or is that the actual mechanism? This is like a pitch. Yeah. You know, hey, what do you do? I help people to do this by doing this. Sure. Sure. Yeah. It's got to be very like narrow. Just start with narrow, actually, and broaden it out. And even by thinking of this, you want to think about it every single day. If you think about it all the time. You'll get a lot better at figuring out who that person is, and your marketing will get a lot better as well. She's ready? Okay, we'll, we'll start with Steph. Okay, so as I said, um, I help high network individuals to obtain more of their wealth by minimizing their tax burden um, on an account of the business. What about the new offer that you want to make? Uh-huh. Mm. <laughs> 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 but, but you see how fast she went? 
That's why you're good at what you do. Because you know exactly who it is, right? That's where you need to be with, with your offer, like really, really quick. Um, so, so we'll go to Martin. Now. Yeah, I'm struggling a little bit because I, I know I help entrepreneurs, and I, the, I, it's the language around it. I help them improve their performance. Okay, but what does that mean? You know, I think it's a bit general, but and then it's by doing what I do quite a lot of things with my clients. You know. Um, I've got a couple in my room, so Will obviously speaks about Daniel, I spoke quite a bit, Charlie now. This is really interesting what you're saying, I'm already like got the answer in my head already. Oh yeah? yeah. Okay. Because you say performance is broad, Yeah. there's things inside of each one that you could potentially help with. Yeah. So there'll be one that's like the main thing, so it could be I help entrepreneurs maximize their energy levels by, by 10 times. I think it's probably that, yeah. Because the people who are like in pain, mm -hmm. that's what it is. Like they're they low energy. Because uh, energy is an is an effect of everything, right? Yeah. The sleep, the food, the, yeah. yeah. So so that could be one of them. I, I used to know a guy that would say, "I help entrepreneurs increase their testosterone." Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he 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 also said that. So I think that's good though. I think I help them maximize their thing, but but then it's by doing. There's also that as well yeah, inside yeah. of it, right? So, so we, we kind of have to figure it out and make it as simple and easy to understand, but also brilliant as well. Like as in, because if I say I help maximize your energy by 10 times, or even if I say 100 times, it's almost unbelievable, right? So it's a very strong power pitch. So it might be more like I help entrepreneurs increase that productivity by maximizing their energy. Of, of focus. What I have been saying really is, well, here's what I have been saying. I help entrepreneurs um, increase their energy, and focus, and results without the burnout. Okay, that's good, and I wanted to add some problems in there as well. So you could say, I help entrepreneurs maximize their energy by 10 times by getting rid of their brain fog. You see, because brain fog yeah. is a big one, and they don't know why they have it as well, Yeah. right? By getting rid of their brain fog. I think uh, burnout is a big one as well. Burnout. Burnout is a bit general. It's good, but it's a little bit general. Right. It would be a little bit more narrow. Like, like brain fog is very specific. You know? Burnout, you, I, 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 sleep. Yeah, burnout could be anything. So, so here's, here's another thing I was going to say uh, when we talk about three choices here. Right? I've got avatar three choices. Is your solution could help multiple different individuals. So if you say entrepreneurs is one, right? right? And executives is another. Yeah. Right? But then also your solution is multifaceted as well. So it doesn't have to be by reducing brain fog. It could be something else. And I'll give you an example here. If you look at up-level consulting, we help entrepreneurs to productize. That would be an agency owner who would come in or a one-on-one -on -one coach who would come in. But if you had a course creator that came in, they already had a product. But our solution also helped with maximizing sales, getting more leads through the funnel. So you change it. So I can change it. Whoever you're talking exactly. to. Exactly. But you have to know what your product solves. So when you guys create this, you could actually, and Sam's never said this before, but you could create, I'm not trying to, you know, bring him. <laughs> but you could, create, you could create five of these if you wanted to. So it is one for you then. How about this? So I help entrepreneurs perform at their best by getting rid of their burnout, optimizing their energy, mm -hmm. increasing their focus, and I could like switch it depending on the problem that the person I'm speaking to is. Correct, yes. Does that, would that sound, does that sound right? I help entrepreneurs perform. As long as you believe it to be true, as long as you know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not it's fine, but there's a couple of things in there as well that you have to understand is this is more for you than it is for marketing. Oh, this is, this, this, this is another concept. Oh. This is another concept that people don't understand about this statement. This is you getting right with who it is that you help. Because you're not gonna put this in all of your advertising. I mean, you will. Right, but not in that format. So if I have, so for example, if someone comes on the phone with me for up level, like I said, sales guy, everything's a nail. I'm thinking I help course creators to maximize their sales by, you know, close more deals or whatever. Or I help uh, course creators get more leads by fixing their funnel. I knew we did that in the group coaching calls with Jesse. So that would be another one. I help agency owners create a second product that they could sell as part of a suite. 
has nothing to do with upper level, but upper level does do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, so exactly. when someone comes on a call, they tell me I'm an agency owner straight away, I've got my pitch ready. I know exactly what my pitch is going to be. Got so it. for you, if someone has a problem with sleep, yeah. but you see the solution is all the same, it's all the same thing. This is why you'll see mindset coaches. Mindset coaches are all solving the same problem. But you see the market believes it's a different reason they have the problem. Some, some of them think it's sleep, some of them think it's their reality, their subconscious, whatever, but it's all the same solution. So for you guys, I think if you already have, like let's say for example Charlie, you already have an offer, it's very obvious what it is. Yeah. This, this exercise for you will help for your sales team to expand to know who it is that they can help, right? Yeah. But for people who are just trying to create their offer, like Vince for you, is you just need to have one clear one to begin with, and slowly but surely, you'll start to see that your offer can help a lot of other people. I'm gonna go into this right now, but we'll go into questions. Anyone have any questions about that? Or if they wanna run something by me, their, their pitch. <coughs> so basically, uh, for now, I've just been helping uh, with, the, with the course. Uh, like my, my statement was kind of like, I help ordinary, ordinary people learn content creation by making learning editing software simple and fun. That's the whole promise, to teach them the skills. You said you help people. Yeah, like ordinary people, not, yeah, tech, would, not yeah. tech person, mm. you know? Like mm. people are not I would change the ordinary person. Okay. I, I would change it to something a little bit more specific. Like he, he, like Mark has got entrepreneurs. <laughs> even Mark needs to narrow that a little bit more. But you could, yeah. if, you, if you wanted yeah, to, yeah, you don't yeah, have to. But yeah. even, because I have people who like from, like, who are 50 year old moms mm. and who are, like 17 year old college students or whatever. But they're aspiring like, to something, right? They're aspiring to create content for what reason? Yeah. For uh, what reason? It depends, to be honest, because I had some people who like want to do it for a job, but I also had people who just want to learn it for fun so they can edit like a vacation video for their family. So it is kind of like. Then, then, then that would work. It's a low ticket. Yeah, but it, but it wouldn't work for high ticket. Yeah, so for a high ticket, can I have. Can I have two statements? That was going to be my question. Because the other one would be, I help creative freelancers grow to 5 to 10k a month by building acquisition yeah. systems and an offer. That's yeah. very good. Right? So, that's like, that's that's, very specific. That would be the other one, but I still I feel like I want to keep the, the video editing thing because that's what I built my whole audience and channel on. Like the low ticket offer. Okay, so, it, so, so can that, I have two different? So is that is, so that one that you just told me, that second one, is that an offer that you're considering? Yeah, the high ticket, which we discussed. Okay, yesterday. so we'll get back to that, because I know you're trying to really nail down what the offer is. Yeah. We'll get back to that one. Okay. There's a lot in there. Okay. So, uh, David, do I still have everybody's attention? I have a quick question. So, like, in my sales calls, what I'm trying to do is build, like, a slide, like, a pitch deck, a bunch of slides. If you do have five or so different offers in line, would you say that that kind of starts working against you? You say that all the time? Like, if, if, if you're going to change your offer mentally based on who the like, person comes on the call, needs help with ads, someone needs help with sales, someone needs help with mindset, would you then, in that case, advise against a pre-prepared pitch deck of the program? Uh, so, yes, I would, but I would have specific slides, right? So the way I used to do it is I would have slides and I would put up whatever slide I wanted that was relevant to the person situation. Does that make sense? Previous to the call, previous to jumping on the call. Well, I mean, I would, I would qualify that on the call and I would know. So while you're having the call, you're kind of moving slides around? No, I'm not moving slides around. I have them ready. Like a, like a, like a, I don't have a PowerPoint. I don't have a PowerPoint. Right. A one pager, right? You have a one pager. I have a one pager. Oh, yeah. No, 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 I'm thinking I have like a PowerPoint of like one, two, three. I mean. Yes, yes, you can go. One pager. You can have maybe multiple in the same PowerPoint. Pitch decks. Pitch decks are good for. Investors, business, yeah. pay deals. Nah, so nah, nah, yeah, you don't, you don't really need it for this. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, for, 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 especially if you're doing YouTube, a lot of these people know who you are. Yeah. Well, I'm doing YouTube ads right now. Cool. Okay, so for YouTube ads, you need something a little bit more in depth. But you don't need that. I wouldn't say you need a pitch deck. No. Yeah, or keep it but, keep it at least generalized, whatever you prepared, and then like verbally lean in on the problem that you have in the sales. Well, what's more important is what's in the pitch deck. Better, yeah. You know, so 
Uh, I'm not against having one pages and fish sex and stuff, but just don't overcomplicate. I think what Alex said yeah, is right. Yeah, yeah. Just don't overcomplicate. Yeah. Especially when you're working with consumers and stuff, it's not necessary. Yeah. You know? Um, so, let's say, for example, Vince, Mark, uh, David. This is the next thing you need to consider. So, when you're building this line, the next thing is, and this isn't spoken about anywhere, okay? Your total addressable market is how big is the market that you're selling it to. Yeah. The, 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 the smaller it is, the, the more you better be charging. The bigger it is, uh, the less. That's why you guys will see business opportunity offers like Amazon FBA. You know, this is why Cole, because I spoke to Cole before he started any of this, right? Cole was trying to figure out what offer to go for and he wanted to scale it massively. And he decided that he would go for a biz op to train people to become salespeople and then use that for recruitment purposes mm -hmm. later because that scales massively because anybody could want to do that. That's like what Vince was saying, yeah. ordinary people. That's the whole of planet Earth. Yeah. That scales very well, but you're not going to be able to charge a lot of money for it unless you have um, financing or like Charlie type of payment plans yeah. where it's going six months, 12 months, which isn't impossible. You know, if you have a great offer, you can control the default rate on that. Yeah. But this is just something for you guys to think about. So for me, uh, I do fractional VP work for four different companies. I don't need to do any more than that, and I can charge them twelve and a half thousand a month plus upside because they're making a lot of money. There's not a lot of those types of companies that will have three or four salespeople, so I don't need a lot of them. But you guys should consider when I'm going to make the offer, how big is the market? And if you're going to do high frequency sales like Charlie, every day eight calls, every day eight calls, I think you as well, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. David, this question on your fractional VP mm -hmm. work. Are you uh, specifically focusing on VP of sales? Yes. So I, I, I'm doing done for you work right now. So you come in and you're like the sales. You just... I manage the team. I listen to the calls. I do all that stuff. Oh, you do? Yeah. That's good to know because I often have people who like ask me if I know anyone for that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. All right, cool. um, so with that, the reason I brought that up is because I, there's not a lot of companies. There are, but not that many in the high ticket space that in online training business that do that. So for that reason, I have to charge high prices. You know, but if you have a consumer market, um, and, I, and I'll talk about Quasi actually because you, you know who Quasi is. It's the same with Quasi. Quasi narrowed down everything to entrepreneurs only, and it hurt him. It hurt him a lot because his offer technically can solve problems for a lot of different people. His pipeline got smaller. He went from 500, 600 applications a month because his messaging was broad, and he turned it to entrepreneurs only. It shrunk right down to 200 to 250 applications a month, and he was making less money because of that. So you guys should really think about what's the right what's the right size of the market. So if you're going to charge high prices, it's okay to have a size that's ten thousand or fifty thousand people in that market. It's fine, right? But if you're charging, let's say, uh, I don't know, five thousand dollar ticket or whatever, personally, I'm not going any less than a hundred thousand. When I say five five thousand ticket, a hundred thousand, yeah, hundred thousand is fine. Anywhere from fifty to hundred k, I think. Say five, five to ten k ticket is is got ten thousand people. You can't really run out. Say again. You've only got ten thousand people. You can't run out. You you cap out. It wouldn't be viable to run out to like an audience smaller than fifty k. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. How do you how do you quantify how big your audience yeah. is? How big the market is? Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of resources that you could use. There's like I, uh, I think it's called Ibis. It's an online market research platform. It tells you how big the size of the market is. For me. I have the privilege of being in my industry like long enough to know what how big it is, and it's not that big, by the way. Like the coaching consultant market is probably like fifty thousand people. But let's say therapists, how many therapists are there? Yeah, it's funny because like this question, we get it a lot of the time. We never manage to really, to really like uh, quantify it. Yeah, and we just try to push more on the ads each time, and so. Now we are doing around 500k a month, 400k a month, mm. and it's still working very well. So I don't know what is the cap. Yeah, but it's true that you know, like there are a lot of therapists in France. Mm. Like every year, there are more and more. So 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 this goes to this here, which is there's three tiers of every market usually anyway. So let's say property. There's the person that wants to buy their first property, then there's a the person that has ten properties and wants to expand their portfolio or maybe reduce their taxes through some sort of strategy. And then there's a person with a hundred or a thousand and they're looking to maybe just passive, passively invest or whatever it might be because they have too much money. You should also consider this when you make the offer as well, is which market is it that you want to advertise to? 
Because if you say the addressable market, let's say coaches and consultants, if I say it's, it's, it's 100, let's say 50,000, a, per, a, a percentage of these people are going to be beginners. And there's going to be advanced, and then there's going to be mastermind type of clients that you can get as well. Each of them should be priced differently, which is why free products is really, really good. You know? And just to recap for you guys why I'm talking about this, is because when you come up with, with this, all of these things should come into consideration. What tier market are you trying to advertise to? What's the size of that tier market? So you know if it's even viable and what you should price it as. Like if your market is small, I would never charge a small amount and I would always do recurring. You know? Because I want those as recurring contracts. Could you, um, could you give an example of maybe one? For, for, for this? Small market, high price recurring. So I think consultant.com is the, is the best example. Accelerator is a business opportunity. Become a consultant, whatever. The, the, the market's planet Earth, mm -hmm. right? But it's low price. 2000 and we did 999 sales, 499 we did all of that, right? Easy barrier of entry. But then if you want to think business strategy, Accelerator feeds into up level too. So this is another thing that I'll we can touch on afterwards is can people upsell and cross sell for the different offers you have. Up level, smaller market, 50, 100, 70, 100, right? There's only like so many successful consultants that need that product of moving into a course, which is very narrow by the way. That was 58, 70. Then there's mastermind, even fewer people. That's why we did recurring, right? Even fewer of those people, 100 cap, $36,000 each, right? So that's a good example of it. I think any of you could look at anything that you buy, you know? Uh, what, the gym, you go to the gym, it's like, what, 10 pounds a month, 20 pounds a month. Personal trainers, XYZ, classes that much, right? Who goes to the classes and who goes to the gym? Anyone goes to the gym, anyone does. Who does the classes is the people that can't probably afford the personal training, yeah. right? And then the personal trainers is the executive, right? So think about that uh, when you design your offer and also decide where you want to start. Like I know Vince is on low ticket right now and this is a really variable question when say, which I, I start on high ticket or low ticket. I think it always depends on your assets in terms of your audience size. Do you have an audience? Do you not, do you not have an audience? Do you have money in the bank? That's, so that, I, I can't answer that question for everyone. What should you start with? But if you don't have money in the bank, I think probably high ticket. Because low ticket ain't gonna make you no money. Uh, but low ticket will build an audience for free. Yeah. Um, Mike, I was just, uh, I really want to dig into this for you, man, because I know like you're kind of, this is, you're in like the stage of figuring this out, but you're like, okay, now, do I go, do I make a lower uh, ticket kind of course, or do I just do the same thing and charge higher size? I want to know, like, what, what did you kind of get from that? Yeah, I was actually, the, the question I wanted to ask, say for our marketing, what, the, the way I advertise it in the videos is I target busy professionals, which is which is broad. I wonder now, because you say you don't want to make it too niche, would, would I be cutting out too many people if I just said CEOs or C-level executives? Uh, or? You said a fitness program? Right. You definitely would, yeah. Uh, you could do both, because they're actually both, they're similar in terms of, okay, so I didn't speak about this, what, what they qualify for, right? Right. So if they both kind of qualify for the same pricing. So yeah. you could go for both of them very easily. So in, in the marketing, are, are you kind of saying I can I can alternate between like the, the messaging? 100%. I've seen people do it very successfully. And then, are you an executive, a CEO? <laughs> <Someone's> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so something like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. But then for you, there's the tiers as well. Man. Yeah, managers as well. I was, I was also going to say with, with like the issue we, not the issue, but where we are at now with the 8K, the, the idea is, okay, cool, we want to do the course instead to kind of get back with people who are selling at five. Do we, like on the sales call now, for example, the volume that we get in, who do we, like what are we selling now? Do I, and uh, I had a chat with Alex, do we sell the 8K and then whoever takes the 8K, fantastic, and if 8K is out of the price range, down sell them into the course on the phone or do you sell them the course and then sell them on the back end to the, or do you do course first and then course? Right. So I would probably, if, if, if I was going to make a decision on that, I would probably choose creative financing over a different offer. Yeah, if I was going to, yeah. Creative financing. As in like, uh, I know someone in the fitness space, uh, mm -hmm. he does 600,000, 700,000 a month. Right. Mm -hmm. He does 3K up front or 4K, I'm no, sorry, 5K up front. Okay. And he'll do five months of $300 a month, or something like that. Oh, like a recurring right. after that, yeah. right? So they have a buy-in. So let's say they can't afford the 8K. You'll sell them 5K, and then you can pay these payments up front. This is how we negotiate all deals, like over the phone. 
right? Is financing is how you close deals, more deals. Uh, how, how do you then guarantee that they can, can continue that payment? You don't have a great product plan. You have a great product, great onboarding. You can't take a PG, I think. You can't take a PG? Yeah, or can you? Oh, you mean like a direct debit type of? No, no, like a personal guarantee. Uh, this, this, yeah, is a, this business model is a volume model. Right. This is high frequency. Yeah. This is something yeah. eight calls a day. Deal, no deal. Okay, next. Deal, no deal. It's like yeah. that. So we, we we can't be catching yeah. up with everyone. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. You know, because you're selling. Info. And people people also typically yeah. looking for well, at least in fitness, so they're looking for a guarantee. They're usually looking like how do how do they a way out? Yeah. 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 So yeah. you. Yeah. Well, I don't know because I asked a question as well. I was looking for a way out, but I asked you because like how do you know it's going to work? And you were like, well, if you're not happy, I'll give you money back. Uh, well, we have that's just really yeah. for every single one of our clients, and it's we found it's actually a good retention strategy for payment plans because we put in terms in order for you to qualify for the guarantee, you have to complete your payments. Mm. Right. Ah. Then, then plus, that's how we run. It's also the that's that's so smart. Man. So we just say to them like in the terms, it's like all payments must be made on time without delay unless a reasonable excuse is given. For example, a stolen car. So that way, people are. Because people come into the guarantee, twenty clients, all your money back. That's a five grand wire, right? And then that way we get all the payments. Through. Because if they don't pay, then they they they're disqualified for the guarantee. Ah, <coughs> that's yeah, that is. Yeah, that is I guess, that's good. But also, if someone's like, oh, how can I guarantee this? Like, that's a fear thing. So you can't guarantee much in life. You have to handle that in yeah, yourself. You have to, yeah, you have to handle it. Because if you don't handle that, there, it's like yeah. the only guarantee is you die. So why ask me that question, man? You scared? Huh? You scared? Exactly. Well, that's what I would say to them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 you know Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> But yeah, that's, that's how we collect the most amount. So we've got, if we sign 100 clients on finance, 80 of them will complete. Is that completion? Um, what, like what, what would you attribute to that, by the way? Because I think that's interesting. I, I think a lot of it is the quality of the product. Um, but we don't have any class success on it or anything. I think a lot of it is just a guarantee. And like the thing is, is if they do it, it works, and then if you give them enough value, and they just continue to pay you because they feel bad about it. But you always, you know, you're always going to have ten, twenty percent people that are just shit people. You know? yeah. Even like we've had people who come in, they'll add like ten grand, twenty grand to their revenue after three months, and then they're just like, oh, give me a refund. But like, no, no, just to speak the payments, yeah. just a refund anyway. So like, generally, we've done an info. Your Stripe, your Stripe account is your holy grace or bible you do not you, if someone asks for a refund you just refund them because it costs you more yeah, yeah, yeah. it costs you way more than a lot couple of thousand dollars the yeah. stripe stripe held 50 percent of all of our earnings in um in like reserve for 90 days because we have one dispute really? because we're out of business stripe blocked 60 grand yeah, yeah we had that point 110 grand just like they blocked it by 30 days because of their refund yeah. you know there's got to be a a, a different option to strike. Well, we're going to build our own payment processor. We're oh, you are? Yeah. Um, so a little, a little bit of information. I used to work with Ty Lopez. And, um, yeah, I used to work with Ty. And um, Ty had like, like, I think we had like, he would have like 20, 30 different backups. Wow. For payments. <laughs> yeah. 20, 30 like, different b- backups for them all. That's it's running out of time. If you work in Bizzle, you have yeah. To, yeah. It's just like normal. So, so what, what, one thing that we've done to, uh, to make sure we, well, touch wood, make sure that the dispute rate stays really low, we've got six members of staff on a one pound per yeah, day. Yeah, we have the same thing. Yeah, one pound a day. We've through like. Yeah, we've got the only off background. <laughs> where, where does this put in? Get so we get five members of staff to have a one dollar per day or one pound per day rolling mis- uh, uh, subscription, mm. and each person therefore puts through thirty transactions a month. Yeah, we have exactly the same. One hundred fifty. We got we got blocked by strikes. Yeah, so they keep coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it keeps your percentage low. Transactions. <laughs> because basically, strike, strike, it, it doesn't do it in the algorithm. Yeah, it works. Yeah. Oh, so it works. I, I thought, I thought, I thought it because it's done on percentage of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Charlie, yeah. Charlie, Charlie, you don't find that anymore. You don't do that a lot. No, you can't put it on YouTube though, because then strike will be like, you know, oh, that's what people are doing. Yeah. Don't put it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't do that. 
Probably it's it's worthwhile. Right? Right? But it's also just that we don't. I feel like I'm also eggshells all the time. Sometimes the roof I'm terrified it's not random because I know they'll stick. And then, you know, then Stripe just lost. But I would do a, a dispute with Stripe, with uh, Stripe, because in France, like, I mean, none of our customers did it. Really? Like, they just write us an email, but... No. They're just called the bank. Stripe, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, but you, it's very normal in the US to do the chargebacks. Yeah. yeah. But, like, for example, like, in Russia, it doesn't exist. Yeah, in France, it's the same. It yeah. Exist. The culture. So maybe, like, no, I mean, like, so you so even go to the bank, I want to so do a chance yeah, like, just going back to what you said there, Jim, about that, Jim, about no intention of the pay, it's like, why can you Got that avenue there, which is like Charlie said, it's like the guarantee. That's, 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 that's like, yeah. they could feel like they're a bit trapped, but there's no value. Yeah. But yeah. the answer is, they're going to keep them for more value and they'll keep it. Yeah, yeah. 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 and yeah. Yeah. if you've got a good offer, like, they're going to pay, especially yeah. if someone who's paid five kills, yeah. because yeah. it's not like a two kill yeah. long yeah. ticket, yeah. so they're pretty good clients, like an extra one. It's not going to be good. One I wouldn't recommend it for you, David, no. if you're going to make an offer. So for you, it would be all cash, I would say. Yeah, all cash. All cash. Really? Because, you know, we have to think about that level, that qualified client that you want. Um, well, that, that's a follow-on question as well that somebody else mentioned. So, uh, I think it might actually have mentioned that if you got an offer of 25 grand, um, would you uh, drop down if that was too much for them or they weren't as far as advanced on their journey? Would you then offer them another product which is lower end entry stuff? That's like how to get no, started. No, not if you're starting out. If you're starting because you'll get distracted. You'll get people on the phone and you're going to be like, oh man, like if I just did this other product that he would have bought from me. He just is in your bio. That's all it is. Yeah. So it feels difficult. Like, it feels like leaving easy money. It happens to everyone. Yeah. I, made, I made one guy, we were just talking about Quasi, I made him stop his mastermind. Really? Because he, yeah, I made him stop it and he stopped it. Why? Because he, he, like, he was getting easy money from it, but it wasn't a good deal for his business at that time. You know? Well, he I, needed to build his core product before he moved on to that, and he rushed to the mastermind uh, because he heard that masterminds are the thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so he, but he wasn't ready for it at that time. So this is about timing, and that's going to be on a very individual thing, but if we're going to talk about your timing, go for the 25K. Um, and, okay. if, and decide if you want upfront or in payments. And that's that's totally fine. That's totally fine. Five people a month. Do you um, think you could do a mastermind or a payment plan then? You could. I mean, lots, lots of people do that. Lots of people do that. What you said, people are still gonna. So it's like a one-time event. Yeah, that's no, what, what, yeah, what, what would the so event they pay, be? So they're paying the advance before the event. Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise, yeah. okay, so they're paying after. Okay. Yeah, I mean, most people do do masterminds on payment plans, like long, like yearly tuition ones. Yeah. They'll do like you know, the twenty-five piece in six months or something like. I that. think there's a different um, a length. The definition that we need to create because some are saying masterminds like mm. this is a one-time mm. event this is an event yeah and then there's other masterminds where mm. it's oh, an okay. event plus Correct, yeah. Yeah. a community yeah um something like group coaching and community coaching over mm. a year or so mm -hmm. which i think you probably want to go for like an inner circle group that you work with over a 12-month period is that not what you would want to do i think a or a one time okay so i'll reverse engineer that my the way that to set that up is I'm trying to engineer for my own time. Mm -hmm. So I think I can give somebody that much value that I could get all the value out of them within two days, sorry. There you mm -hmm. go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But did, I can see the fact that there would be so much follow-on questions after that as Correct. well. Well, then so, they can come to the next one. Well, then <laughs> 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 I'm going to create a, a subscription model for monthly thousand pounds to have an hour's access to me once a week. Right, How much? Just, 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 back, just your time is worth. Well, it has to be group. Yeah, but David, that's just a mastermind in the classic tradition. That's all you're doing. Right. You're just turning it into a 12 month. So you might as well create a solid tuition based offer. Six months, 12 months. This much upfront. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Leeds. Leeds. Yeah. A new thing for you, Will. Yeah. It's an experiment with figuring out how we can make it bigger and better. Yeah. But yeah. For, for Samuel Lee, that's his business model. He'll yeah. take the money off you. Won't learn, you won't learn shit. Like, he just uses an opportunity to upsell. Whereas I know you're looking for premium, VIP, like the best premium quality thing that someone can come to. That's not going to come from one day. That's going to come from six months or 12 months where you're actively trying to get somebody a result. Yeah, yeah. And that yeah. result's good for you. Yeah. And it's properties are slower thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. A long term thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do like two events a year for three days, one every six months, with a community like school, kind of like quantum, and then a weekly or bi weekly group call that anyone can attend, mm -hmm. and do it for like, you know, 45k for the, for the year. Yeah. And you get both events, the coaching every month for 12 months, and that, because that's. That is awesome. I, I, I would also cap it at like 10 people. Yeah, that, right. Because you're conscious of your time. Yeah. So you're like, maybe just yeah. work with 10 people and That's here's what's going to happen. Is you're going to get the feedback from them live over that 12 month period. It's going to build your belief. It's going to build your um, authentic feeling of you're helping someone. Because it's very close work you're doing with them. It's only 10 people. You can track what they're doing and help what they're doing. And also it's very selective. You know, it's not an open ground like a biz off. Yeah. It's like anybody comes in on the front end, you're choosing who you want to work with. Yeah. So I think that would be better for you and your character that, that I've kind of picked up from you. So yeah. and also you, you, to, you can uh, fine tune it uh, with, the, with the feedback and what you want. Yes. You can essentially pick who you want to work with. You said earlier, I don't work, I work with dickheads, I don't work with people like yeah. you guys. People yeah. Like, yeah. Because you, you can, can actually tell like that as part of the sales process in the sense of, I went on um, Iman's Gents Croquet Club call. Is that any good or not? I'll tell you in a second. Uh, I don't think they very well because they're like not taking people on unless we want to. So they were trying to make me justify it's myself. Yeah, it was yeah. like an interview for me, like, can I be let in? Whereas actually, it's their sales process to make me pay 10 grand. Yeah. But <laughs> generally, yeah. uh, but what you've just said there about selecting your group, I could actually cleverly turn that on its head in the sense of I'd only, I'm only giving myself X amount of time this year. Mm. And therefore, I'm only going to be able to take on 10 people this year. So I want to select people. people that that. His needs to be processed. Can you take the the minute, the minute you the now. minute you reject someone, your whole idea about sales will change, which I'm sure you've done before in the past. You've rejected someone before. It's only me getting rejected by women. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some banks up here. <laughs> your penis is tiny. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about justifying price as well because somebody brought that up earlier. How do you justify the price for your product? I know a very quick and easy way to do that. Uh, if you could, because I like help with that. Yeah, and I'll give you an example of how I did that when I was a broker like eight years ago. Because yeah. I, I went through a lot of difficulty trying to sell something that was so cheap on the high street. Yeah, and I had to figure out how to sell that. So, but we'll, we'll move on from here. So um, I help this person to do it. So we're clear on what the offer is. And then slowly but surely you can narrow down like who, what, who else the offer can help um, by looking at your avatar choices, okay? And then you can make a few different statements. You look at the size of that market, so you know how you should, like how many people are there, and that will justify what the price should be. It's not justified, but it'll help you come up with the price. If there's a lot of them, remember this, this is a rule of thumb. If there's a lot of them, it's always going to be consumers and civilians. If there's less of them, it better be business people, otherwise you're wasting your time, or people that have money. There's usually always three tiers. Um, and then this is the next one, so avatar three choices, that, that kind of comes in with the three tiers. The next one is a channel on the sales process. This will help some of you who are just starting as well, which is once you figure out who your avatar is, what, the, what, the, what, kind, of, what kind of qualified buyer they are, how large they are, this one isn't talked about anywhere either. And I heard someone use the terminology before, which is, you know, you have product market fit. You also have a channel market fit as well. Like where does that person go to get their information? And this is why a lot of people struggle with their Facebook ads don't work. Mm -hmm. Who is it that helps with family? Oh, there's someone on the boat who said that. This, I did make this guy on the boat, and he helps um, families with that have kids that have video game addiction. Yeah. Oh, Cameron. Yeah. Cameron is such a sick guy, man. He was, he was really cool. And I said to him, Facebook is going to be the best place for you to advertise. Why? Because parents, parents are on Facebook. Right? So this is just a quick thing for you guys to consider, because if you're going to, like, David, if you, because we're talking about that right now, with your product, is if you go for those high net worth individuals, it is not, it's probably not gonna be on Facebook, it's probably not gonna be on YouTube, they probably don't consume content that much. You know? High net worth people are usually in networks, 
do you know what? Mm. Uh, yeah, somebody else just gave me the idea after this because mm. when I was doing that presentation thing, somebody said, you should just go on mastermind events. Yeah. Mm. Like, I know, I know people who do that. I know, I, want, like, yeah, yeah. 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 I know a guy who sells like $150,000 ticket for like tax services as well. Yeah. Uh, and he, you know, who I'm talking about, yeah. right? Yeah, he, he, like, his best deals come from going to masterminds. <laughs> you know, so, that's one for Steph to do as well. Yeah, who is that? I'm it makes sense. sense like, no, no, no. Casey Chow, man. I, I, oh yeah, Beverly Hills. He's top G, man. Casey, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, he makes most of his money from going to these because that's where I network people. Of course. Like all of us, like, we use Facebook and stuff, but we're all also marketers. Mm -hmm. So we're not using it to consume content. We're yeah. using it to advertise. Yeah. But where do they go? They go to other events like this. So yeah. just something for all of you to consider. Okay. Where does my market go? Um, if, if they're women and they're buying like con consumer or fitness products, they're going to be on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know I what think, I mean? Yeah, I think that's a really important point uh, that David's talking about um, because it's very easy just to go down like the Facebook route or like, oh, YouTube ads, Facebook ads. Yeah. But sometimes that is not the best place. That's not the best place to spend your advertising dollars. So for example, for Casey, yeah. the tax advisor, the best way he can spend his advertising dollars is going to Mastermind. Yeah. That's his advertising. And joint ventures. And joint, and joint ventures. ventures. And say for example with you, Mark, as well, because I know a lot of people in, in the former space as well, it's all YouTube, man. It's YouTube organic on top of that. Because people who want to learn about improving themselves are like to consume content. I know I do that. You know, whenever I'm trying to improve myself for, I don't know, like the condition I have, I'm looking on YouTube for a top expert, I don't know, Dr. Eric Berg. Mm -hmm. Like, what does he say about advertising? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not yeah. going on a look, I'm looking at a Facebook ad. Right. Yeah. So, when we consider those things, I promise all of you, you'll, you'll get way more qualified leads that way. Where does your market, just ask yourself, where does my market go? Where do they go to get their information? It might be on Reddit. The, the Katie guy that you mentioned, the tax chap. It's, uh, what's his details? Is, it, is he on Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just um, the, the tax bloke. The tax bloke. Yeah, the tax bloke or together CFO. That's He's a British name. guy who lives in uh, Beverly uh, Hills uh, right. and who else? Like High Network. What do you say together CEO? Together CFO. CFO. That's, he doesn't work but to get the finance, does he? No, no, no. Right. It's like a company, yeah. And what was his full name, sorry? Uh, KC, KC, K, like just uh, what, the letters KC and then Chohan, C H O H A N. Does he wear really cool blue suits? No. Um, no, I don't think like KC. Yeah, and K. Yeah, okay. um, so, I'm sorry, yeah, just, just a final question on that. So yeah. he charges 150 grand. 150,000 and 250,000, both. Oh, and uh, and I, I worked with him for a little while as well, and I can tell you right now, like, the people that come on the calls. 400 million net worth, 100 million net worth. Seriously. These are top guys, yeah, yeah. So what's, he, what's wow. the value proposition that he's given? Uh, he uh, builds people a complex trust. Mm. Yeah. So um, it's another way for you to save money on taxes, but still live in like a European or an American country or whatever. So he gives a lot of people that from Puerto Rico or whatever, yeah. that want to come back to the United States, but they want to pay zero yeah. or close to zero. And he just builds them a business trust, a family trust and a charitable trust. Yeah. And he shows you how to move your money throughout those. It's very, very high level shit. It's the kind of stuff that all like the top guys like Warren Buffett, Bill Gates use, like 501c3s, yeah. private foundations and stuff. Yeah. I thought, so the final question on that one is where does he fish in what pond to get his clients? So, masterminds. So, yeah, so masterminds and joint ventures. Joint ventures and masterminds. And, and, and what are uh, joint ventures in this yeah. context? A joint venture, what do like you mean? Partnership with somebody? Yeah, partnerships of other people that have mm -hmm. massive influence over other business owners. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, he was doing a, a, a JV with Bradley. Who knows Bradley? Bradley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he was doing a JV with Bradley. Yeah. So J Bradley has a lot of influence over other business people. Well, how business people? Well, he did one with Sam Others. He came to Quantum yeah, yeah, yeah. and he spoke to everybody at Quantum. That's kind of like a JV. Yeah. But, but uh, Bradley, what? Say again? What's the, Brad, Bradley's name? Uh, B, Brad, like Brad, yeah. and then Lee, L E A. Uh, Bradley, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think about the channel, think of this room, think of the conversations you've had just and the, yeah, even I'm, there's yeah. light bulbs going off in some people's Yeah, even I'm trying to do a deal with you later. Even I'm trying to do a deal with you later. Do you know what I mean? You know what, Matt? Yeah. You should come to every mastermind I ever do. <laughs> 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 it's a win. 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 It's a it's just, it, like, honestly, I, I've never lost time drawing this. I've never lost money from events. I've never lost money from going to an event. I've never lost money from going to an event. I've always made money from it. Yeah. My because mom because yeah. every time, because I saw my mum's life, that was the first time I did that. <laughs> 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 when I did my sales training like a year back, 
<laughs> they, they used to tell you in, in, in sales training the best uh, the best sales approach is always in person. Yeah, it's always sure. in oh, person. Yeah. That's yeah. the most trust will always get built like that. Right? Yeah. And the thing is as well, because it's genuine, like I've come up with this idea when I say idea. I knew I wanted to do something similar to that as in but my whole thing is to keep the portfolio for myself, but then selfishly I want to grow that and the way to do it is sell half the portfolio at a time. And obviously that's created another value for investors I want to part the money safer, etc. But I've only come up with that model about thinking of actually doing it with high net worth investors very recently. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about light bulb light bulb moments coming on, it like I said to me yesterday, within the first half an hour of this mastermind, like ideas were coming that was just like ten times the price of this. Yeah. And to, to partner up with people knowing that you're doing a genuine offer a genuine value, there's no fear in selling as such because it's not a sale it's like i've got this thing you can massively help you to join in on it people pay for value yeah the, fir- the first step to being able to sell high ticket or sell masterminds you have to do it yourself right everyone here has gone to a mastermind now selling a mastermind is going to be much easier yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, well. that's why accelerator or whoever it was i had no guilt whatsoever for anyone those 20 percent they got their money's worth trust me mm-hmm. that 20 percent that defaulted everyone who buys a course gets their worth because when you don't do well, it's the opportunity cost that you figure out mentally. Now I know I didn't want that thing. I made money just from knowing. Yeah, I wouldn't have known yeah, unless yeah, I did it. Yeah, right. It's like a gateway drug. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So right. people buy nine or seven courses, and they get yeah. fucked over, but they still idolize the person who sold it to them. Mm. Yeah, because that person represents who they want to be, so they could never hit the product. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Sorry, Charlie said that again. Like, it's like a, there's like. A, a random joke in the info community, like 997 courses, and well and often, right? yeah, yeah. and it's like most 997 courses by default are fucking they, they, they are shit, right? People buy them and they don't receive the value and correspond to the price, but they still they don't what's the word? They don't get angry because they idolise the person that sells them for so long. For example, take your man, your man Gaji, right? Um, I've heard, not from experience, but I've heard that his entry level course isn't that great. But because people love him and he represents what they want to be, they could never okay. get upset with the course. They right. don't, it's like they're in denial, isn't it? Well, it's like, it's like, oh yeah, Iman's course wasn't that great, I didn't find it that valuable, but I love Iman. Yeah. It's like that, it, it, it's because he's made so many impressions on them that. And perhaps it's, they'll find a genuine justification in their mind of, oh, it wasn't a great Well, then they say, oh, but it got me started. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, wow. it's, it's like, it's like, but it got me into it. So, yeah. you know, I found some value there. They justify yeah. it. It's, yeah. like, it's like buying merch, right? You wear a shirt, you'll probably wear it once and never again, but you bought it because it represented something to you. Like, yeah. you wanted to support the person. So, you have probably, like, given them so much value, more than that 997. And in his actual YouTube video, they're like, well, I support you anyway. So, it's, yeah. yeah. And also, to get upset, it, the course would be to get upset with themselves making the decision. Yeah. Yeah. So they have to love themselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're just like, oh, I, I wouldn't have made my decision, so it must be a good course. Mm-hmm. But I found something about it because my ego is too big. So, it's so true. Yeah. Yeah. David, I have a good question. So, from Sam Oven's perspective, I know focus is crucial. Suppose I have two avatars one is the online entrepreneur on YouTube ads, and one is the executive on LinkedIn ads, let's say. Uh-huh. Um, wouldn't that kind of start diverging your focus a no. little bit? So I like to call this the block of ice method, and I've done this with a lot of people as well, is you want to start with this, and over time you'll chip it away. You'll chip it away as you start selling, and you'll see who 80% of the people is that, that buy from you. And then you'll have something that you can see, like a, you know, uh, allegorically like the ice being like yeah, something that you start with and you end up with like a picture or a statue at the right, end of it. Right, right. So you can start with three avatars and as you start to chip it away, you'll see, okay, 80% of the people who buy from me are this person, I'm gonna focus down my advertising on this. So you can do it that way. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, I guess my question was more about the channels, not the avatar, and that like, you, oh, you have to go to different channels to hunt for the different avatars, but it's for the same product. Okay, so, so this is kind of like a, a bit of a different thing, but you definitely want to start with one. But yeah. every channel will cap out. Every channel will cap out. Ads will cap out. YouTube will cap out. Eventually, you'll have to go to a different channel. I've seen everybody at the two million, three million a month. All of them go through this, and the way they break it is they have to go to a different channel. They have to hire sellers. They have to do direct mail. They have yeah. to do, because you're not, you're not going to get everything from one place, man. It depends on how what you want to do with the business. This goes back to intent. Yeah. But just start with one. Yes. Start sure. with one. Yeah. And YouTube is very good for what you do. So 100% stick with that. But YouTube organic? Yes. 
Okay. Would, would that I wanted to ask David, but I, like something that when I started uh, when I did closes.io, the one thing that I learned which helped tremendously was the call to action. Mm. And it, so basically, what I was doing was then, hey, do you want to work with me? Just book a call, and like I wouldn't get as many people to click, mm. right? Or I noticed when they're like, hey, your call to action is really shit. Like, mm. make it more. Do you have some sort of formula where you feel like do this to make the best call to action possible? Because it's You'll have someone see it, but really like take action on doing it. Okay, so here's the funny thing, right? I can bring up what I did with Charlie. Yeah. yeah. So I did an event with Charlie like about a month ago now, okay. and we had 150 people live on the call, and I was just doing like a masterclass for you know closing and sales and that stuff. <clears throat> and at the end of it, I literally don't have anything to sell. Like I don't have a course, I don't have coaching. I just work with my my private clients every month, and that's it. But at the end of it, I said maybe I will. Maybe I'll have something in the future. If you're interested, show me you're interested by. Um, uh, applying to join for my school group. From that 150, 98 people. Thank you. But, but the reason it worked is because that's what I believe. I have a very like unorthodox way of approaching the CTA or what my offer is. I always say, what do you believe? What's the most genuine thing that you think? I think, do you look at Charlie? Charlie's the same. I know Charlie, you're the well, same. I was going to say, so I've had the same... You said the YouTube channel books 30 calls a day, and I have the same description for the last 300 videos. And it basically says, I hate case study funnels. This is literally what the description is. I hate case study funnels and being pitched just as much as you do. But if you're curious about how we help agency owners, coach consultants beyond these videos, the link below will explain. No bullshit, no email opt in, and no free training can be found there. Check it out. And then it just goes through to a funnel. So let, the, less you, the, the less it looks like you care, the more people will go. And, and at the end of my videos, I just say to people, there's a link in the description if you want to work with me. If you don't click it, I don't give a shit, I'll do that. You see, because that's literally, literally that's what I, how I've edited every single video with that, and it works so wow. well. The, the energy and the authenticity of yeah. the world will always trump the technique. Oh, still, yeah. Always. <laughs> <It's right. laughs> like, like techniques, I don't know if you guys are, <laughs> Because we're all experienced like business people, it's, it, we're probably all on the same page about this, but when you guys see copywriting, you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You yeah. can right. see it, and you're like, this is bullshit. I hate it, man. Well, when yeah. someone clicks that, that's basically said, giving them permission. Like you just said, I give you permission to pitch me. That's yeah, that's yeah. what they've just done. Well, Mike, did, you, did, 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 you, did I show you my funnel fun earlier? No, no, I'll so have a look through This is how I started. This is literally the same, the same tone at the beginning. Hey, Could everyone, we it's Charlie Morgan, and welcome to this funnel. Now, I'll be very honest, this is a sales funnel. You and I are both marketers, right? And you and I both know that the reason that this funnel exists is to see if I can encourage you to schedule an appointment. And I'm hoping that with this video... Back so it's like the first thing I say, but no fucking bullshit, yeah. I want to sell You know, um, I don't know if you've seen this, Charlie, but Frank Cohn was running an ad about six months ago, and um, an Instagram ad, and the, and the ad was, um, hi, this is an ad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that's how I started, like, my name is Frank Kern, and you're watching my ad, and then he goes on. Yeah. Yeah. Frank Kern is one of those guys that, that's his edge. Yeah. Like, his edge is, I and mean, if you've got his YouTube, it's all like, listen, I'm just gonna try and sell your product. Yeah. 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 And by the way, it's usually, you know that it's not usually five grand, that it's now 2.5, oh. it is 2.5. Yeah, I, yeah. Say, I say the same thing. Like, <laughs> anti-selling, you can call it anti-selling. Anti -selling. Anti -selling. Anti -selling. But, but, here's, but here's the key though, that might not work for you. That's what I was about well, yeah. to say, yeah. is that, that, that kind of fits your brand. Yeah. Right? So, so my brand is like, I am a science-based, I am, you're coming to me for the honest truth. And like there, there, it's also no bullshit. But I am going to give you what the truth is, and that according to the science, good. like if you yeah. if you want the truth of how to build a disease, then if you feel good about it, man, it's all good. God, you know. So, so I wanted to bring this up. This is why incentive pricing works and doesn't work. Exactly. Because oh, incentive price pricing, price. huh? Yeah, yeah, because probably you don't you think it's bullshit. It feels wrong. Yeah. Right. So let me tell you a funny story. One of the guys, one of the teams I'm working with, <coughs> I brought in incentive pricing, and it worked very well. But the only reason it worked very well is because of the way I introduced it. So I went to the executive and I said, we, 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 should, we should do a genuine price rise. We should do an incentive price, but I wanted to introduce it to the sales team and let them know that it's a real price increase, right? He introduces it, he tells them this is a real price increase, but you can bring the price down, okay, if they make a quick decision. So it wasn't brought in as a script. Mm. It wasn't brought in as bullshit. The next day, the guy, so he, he goes from, from 5,800, he goes to 10,800. He starts selling it only at 10,800, only. And then the other sales guys are like, then they start selling it at 10,800, right? And then the incentive actually starts working. 
So th that's why I always like to talk about belief versus technique because what you believe trumps everything, man. It's well, that's one main takeaway I took from you when I first, first started selling. It's just like incentive-based pr pricing. It was like what well, you did on the call, but I hated it because if I would, yeah. if someone did that to me, I'd just put farm down. Now, see, the reason it worked so well for me is because I, I was being genuine. I'm yeah. Like, Dude, if you get off this fucking phone, mm. it's up on I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to give you the same price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I would deliver it because I, you I truly meant it. It's true. I truly believed it. And my, the way that I used to say it is, look, we know for a fact the best clients are the ones that just come in. Mm. You know, on call what? Yeah, it's we true. Know Bullshit. Yeah. So if you do that, I'll let you have two point eight. Otherwise, it's going to be on Yeah. Well, for, for me, it just didn't sit because I was just like, so you're telling me if I ring you tomorrow and I'm going to buy, here's my money, you're going to say no. Bullshit. Do you know what I mean? That's what I. Thought. Yeah, that's what's going through your. Yeah. So I'm like, I can't deliver that right. So if I don't mm. believe it, yeah, it's yeah, not going to come right. So I scrapped it and then bang. Dude, dude, I can touch on this belief thing for so long. To be honest with you. Yeah, because it's all is yeah. And the thing is with the beliefs is you can change it in an instant. Like, yeah. The, yeah. what, you just what did you on that mark? You know, <laughs> no, 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 honestly, I'll talk about that later yeah. because I've got my own way of figuring my way around belief. Okay. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll touch okay. on that after we go through this. But so we've got high ticket, low ticket. Um, where should you start with each? Um, so if, if this one, I don't even think I could cover this, but I think we could do on an individual basis. I know for David, definitely start with high ticket. Um, but do, are any of you struggling to figure this out or should we just move on? This. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I know. already told you last night, stay with the low ticket. Stay with the low ticket and grow the audience and then move to high ticket at a later time. Grow mm -hmm. it until when? Or like what metric should I aim for? Uh, I look, know if it's look, right time. Look for a metric um, of your size of your customers. So, I don't know, you think you said you have 300 now? Uh, with everything? No, you have 80, I think you said. Yeah, with this uh, course that I, I did in the last two, mm -hmm. two months. And like total, probably like 200. 200. I would go to 500 to 1,000. Mm -hmm. um, you'll have a lot of easy sales. Okay. If the upsell is working for both those people as well. Mm -hmm. And then even when I, because I'm a very patient person. Like a lot of people want to go fast, fast, fast. I don't believe, in, I don't believe that is a real thing in the universe. So I would just wait until it gets to 500,000. When it gets to 500,000, then I would only work with 10 people, just like I was saying to you, David. Take it easy, take it slow, work with them very closely, get the feedback that you want, and then you can decide on what you want to do. If you want to move from high ticket back to low ticket or whatever it is. Because right now you're being encouraged to do high ticket because it's like there's money, money, money. Yeah. But based on what you've told me so far, you don't even know what your situation is, your, your, your offer, and you ha you're having something that works. If you have something that works, Fix that, make it better, grow it, yeah. right? And then you can circle back around because once you go to the high ticket, you'll forget about it. And until then, can I just then keep my messaging throughout all the content I put out? Because you know, now with the high ticket, it would be a different market basically. Okay, like so we want to make money with it. So, so with that, the only thing I would say is make sure that they're all like three tiers and three choices of, of one. Don't go from low ticket and then a completely different market with on the second one. I wouldn't encourage that. There's no point. Like stick with one market, and if you can't, we'll talk about it later. Because I know it's going to be a bit difficult, considering. Yeah. But I know people that teach you how to make radio ready music, mm. like which is artistry, and they charge like five thousand. It mm. works. Mm. Uh, I know another guy who teaches you music composition for movies, mm. ten thousand. It works. So don't worry about that. Cause I know you're, yeah, so yeah, because I feel like I have to teach them how to make money to charge five ten k. When it comes to pricing, you kind of work your way up a little bit to figure out. Hold on, someone will pay for that. But part of it is also knowing who the market is, and you don't know. Yeah. Right. You just started to get something working. That's yeah. why I said just take your time. Get to know. You need data. Get, that's, data takes time. Yeah. You know, get more people inside the low team. Survey them. Hey, if I did this, who would buy? Mm -hmm. Get on the phone with them. Why would you buy? Who are you? You know, and then you'll narrow down your message even more, be better the next time. Okay. Yeah, so okay. patience is key here. And David, why do you think that going fast is not a real thing? Um, going, when I say going fast, I don't mean you going fast is a real thing. Who are you laughing at? <laughs> no, yeah, no, that is real. Will, well. Will just told me to ask you that and then he asked it. So I don't know if you heard well. <laughs> <laughs> because, because the universe works in seasons. The universe works in years. The universe but is that, is that a belief though? No. Like what, what makes That's a fact, because um, I believe there's random reason to, to the universe. Yes, it's a belief. I know that the universe works in like that. Right. I'm not saying you can't make fast decisions, I make fast decisions. Right. But I'm saying expect, look at everything in nature, man. When you're trying to get a good body, does it take one day? Yeah. yeah. Well, like nothing works yeah. in one day. Yeah. It's a universal yeah. law. Has anybody read, read the Tao? 
That's how they change. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, like, 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 yeah, like it, it's a Chinese uh, philosophy book. Yeah. Right. Very old, but it talks about this concept of ebbs and flows in the universe. Now I'm getting way too woo woo, and I'm gonna stop. Yeah. I just want to add something to that because, like, for example, like in the rocket industry, it took countries 30, 40 years to build rockets, and then SpaceX came, built Starship in two years. Yeah. And everyone's like, "How the hell did this happen?" And it's because they they're like, "We're we're we're gonna skip this conventional wisdom." We're gonna think from the ground up, and we're just gonna do it as fast as okay, possible. Okay, so so let me so so let me um, kind of rephrase everything. Things take time, be patient, but everything has its timeline. Sure. You know um, what I mean? It took this long to get out of the industrial age, but once you get out, it shortens yeah. it, right? So it was for me. It took me years to get a nicer body, but now if I get a little bit chubby, which I am, because I've been eating cake since I've been here, cheesecake factory. When I go back, it will take me two, three weeks to get my body back yeah, because I've yeah, already yeah. fingered it. So there's these, but these are all laws. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, like, like the reason, and I guess this is probably the reason Will is motivating me to ask into this is because if I'm hitting these very aggressive, like 50K by June, 100K by September, yeah. at which point do I think, okay, this may be working against the laws of the universe or like just mm. keep pushing through? Uh, you'll need a one-on-one -on -one coach for that, to be honest, to like analyze everything. Like Will, yeah. Will, 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 like you're, you're expecting something tomorrow is not going to happen. Yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. these things take time and they really do. So for, for your, for your case, yeah. if you were to tell me, uh, how, how many subscribers you have on my engineering channel, 4,000, yeah. how much? 4,000, 4,000. So you have 4,000 subscribers and I know people that have a million and they're making 150 to 250,000 a month. Right. Mm -hmm. So for you to expect a hundred thousand by June, you're just not going to get the application volume. You want by June to make a hundred to two hundred thousand. Do miracles happen? Yes, not very often. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not very often. But logically, like looking at it from like a thingy, your main focus is growing a channel. That's where all your effort is going to go into cultivating an audience, not into selling. So here, and here's the reason I bring this up: is you don't want to disappoint yourself. I know business owners were stressed as fuck. Yeah. Like stressed the fuck out. And then I know business owners were super chill because they understand what situation they're in. One of my clients is like zero profit. You know, he just breaks even every month, he doesn't care. Because he knows he's in growth interview, he knows yeah. that, right? He's reinvesting all the time, he's moving on to his mastermind product now, and blah, 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 blah. He's got a sales team, they're doing very well, but they never make him any extra money. But he never stresses out. And he's always chill when I speak to him. Then I've got another client, right? He's profitable. He's making profit. And everybody's like, try to take the money to do something. He's like, wow, bro, like you're still not, like it's, it's coming. You know what I mean? And that's the reason I bring this up is because you don't want to be that stressed out, low HRV, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Guy, sure, you know, sure. you want to understand it's going to come. And part of this is a, is a very, again, I don't want to be woo-woo, but it's a, it's a bit of a trusting thing. Yeah. You trust that it's going to come as long as you repeat the action again and yeah, again yeah. and again. Keep repeating, otherwise it's not going to happen. Yeah. But just be patient about it. That's kind of where I'm at now. Like, me and Will have this conversation all the time. Will, we, I can, I said it to you before, didn't I have that conversation in this room, I feel like I hold my own without a doubt. Will's income is way higher than mine, mm -hmm. but me, in my mind, I'm already there. I trust my process, yeah. I trust my conviction. Yeah. I'm gonna get there, it's just time, the timeline. Uh, and, yeah. and, and, and that's a great point, Alex. And we also said, yeah, I think I was with Charlie, I was saying this, if you look at anybody who's an amateur, they're always going from one thing, the next thing, yeah. the next thing. Yeah. Amateurs yeah. do that, yeah. Yeah. but professionals stick to one thing because they understand time. And actually, there was a great module of Accelerator about this. Do you remember? The time and the memory thing? Oh, man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That, yeah. Went, yeah. That, that, that was, a, that, that was an that amazing was module. Because Sam was trying to say the same thing. Like, uh, you, you can't see what's going to happen in the future. You just can't, and your memory is very short. So you don't know. I don't know that what I'm doing right now could actually make me a billion dollars. I just have to trust that it's going to happen. Or whatever it is I want, not a billion, but yeah. So you have to be patient of it because... Um, you can't see one action that you take, so that you have no you have no choice but to trust time. Otherwise, like an amateur, you'll be like, this isn't working, and you'll go to the next thing. And it's like Alex said, you need data. You have no data at the moment yeah, to right. see if something's working or not, right? So that's why anything good that's good is worth doing again and again and again. The best supplements I take, I take them every day or like every other day or whatever, you know? Otherwise, I'm not going to see a result in one day. Yeah. But if I meditate, it's going to take one week or a month to see the results of the meditation. The laws of the universe, just, that's how it works. <laughs> Just to give you some uh, hope as well and perspective, because you're saying like you use the example of a million followers and he's making 250 grand. Mm. 
you mentioned something on the first day, like your subscription was like 20,000 on YouTube, but then you're bringing 400 grand in a month. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of a hope story there, like you don't need to get to a million followers yeah, yeah, to yeah. get that. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, if you're doing B2C, like that. Yeah. Yeah. High ticket, you more leverage. Yeah. Yeah. Like, one follower to me is worth, if you're charging 10% of my price, then one follower to me is worth 10 to you. Mm -hmm. Just based on that. Yeah. But, so I can have like 20k subs and make more money than some 200k subs. Yeah. So, like price is the biggest point of leverage. Mm -hmm. so, so this comes to your addressable market, the tiers yeah. in the market, what are they qualified for, who is the avatar, like these are the variables. Yeah. These are the variables. But your market's a really big market. Yeah. It really is. You're making 150 easy from that market. Yeah, and the, the way to raise your price and, and have conviction on that spare is just to make your product as good as possible. Mate. Okay, so that's part of it. <laughs> if you think, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're, we're, we're going to talk about that now. Six months of your life into a product, you will have so much faith in it because you, the more pain you yeah. pay, the more conviction you have. There's a relationship between pain into a product and conviction. If you, if you put it together in like a week and you have assets, you know shit. Okay, so the, more, the more you bleed for it, the more you, the more you yeah. have. You've just been through this fight, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've also learned that, like, with, especially with putting out content, especially with YouTube, it, the video doesn't disappear. It's always there. Mm -hmm. So, like, as time goes by, it's still, like, building up for you, right? Mm -hmm. So that one video is still going to be working for you that you made six months ago yeah. and five months ago. And then you would have had this, like, kind of, like, the social group. So, like, the same product I sell now for 8k I used to sell for 60 bucks so when I was selling for 60 bucks I used to think that I was a trash coach but it was just like okay in reality there's only so many people who are going to change their body it doesn't matter what you tell them right you mm -hmm. could you could be at their house almost I and bet then it's just as easy to sell with someone at 8k as it is at 60 bucks it, it's it's actually easier to yeah. sell at 8k because when we decided to change it was, there was just so much pain on our end for the work we're doing like because me and my work we're, we're married but we're also business partners like it was costing our marriage. I was like, fuck it, I'm charging 8K. And it was easier to sell, and it was a lot of fun. A lot more fun. But Ali, kind of like what you said, it's like how you just find that price change. It's having a belief in the product. It is, it's yeah, just having a belief. And I said to Mike, I was like, of anything I've ever like worked on, yeah. like, what he has, it's like amazing. I was like, you could say this thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. And like, here's, the, here's the thing belief takes time as well. Yeah. So, so I, I want to ask you that question as well. So, what was your name? Mike. Mike. Um, you got feedback from the $80 client. Yeah, that's right. it. That's so, it. so here's the thing is like my personal feeling on belief is you need feedback. Like, yeah. You can't look in the mirror and talk to yourself all day. Like, I'm not disrespecting <laughs> anyone that thinks that works or whatever, but for me it doesn't work. It has to be based I know on yeah, the physical universe needs to give you something back. Yeah. 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 You had that though, you got that feedback. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You got that feedback. So charging low isn't a, like you said, you charge three different prices. Yeah. Here's what's going to happen. In three months, they're going to come back to you and tell you that you changed your life. Then you can ask them how to change your life. I'll give you guys a little exercise on how to do this as well. They'll tell you how to change your life, and all of a sudden you're like, holy shit, I'm on the charger, right? So here's what I used to do. I'll give you the exercise now, actually, and then I'll talk about two examples of how to uh, justify price for yourself as well. So when I realized this early on in my sales career is when I would call my clients and then ask them a specific set of questions, the whole week my uh, closing rate would increase. So anyone who's on the phone as well, and I yeah, told you guys this as well, just call up your clients and interview them. Hey, how's things since you started the course? Oh, they great. Okay, great, what changed? Okay, so how was that different from your previous situation? Would you do it again? Would you pay more if you did it again? Would you tell other people about it? I used to ask them these questions, and all of a sudden for the week, my close rates went up like massively. Wow. I was filled with juice, I was filled with energy. Yeah. I was like conviction, because here's the thing of conviction, and you have to look at religious people. Okay, in Islam, every Friday. In Judaism, yeah. every Saturday. In, in Christianity, every Sunday. And I learned some, it's funny because like it's obvious in the religion, but like network marketers in business do this the best. Like network marketers is amazing. Every week once they'll meet up and then they'll do their whole thing, right? Hey, I wanna congratulate this person. He comes up on the stage, he's got his badge. No, 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 I did this and I did this. And then it reinvigorates the, and then they talk about the products again and again and again. It's because, and we were talking about focus earlier, yeah. right? Is you forget, man, you forget shit because we're talking about the alchemy of self, right? Yeah. You forget, so you have to repeat it again and again and again. So well, you do that in religion because you lose faith, yeah. right? You reinforce and, it, yeah. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. you reinforce it, so. That's why people need to be led as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You, you need to have a, a place, an altar to do that, right? So what I do with my clients is uh, once every two weeks, I'll bring a customer on to our sales team meeting, and then we'll talk to the customer and we'll all ask him questions. 
and say, so how, how did it go? What was your life like before? Because my salespeople forget. They forget that they yeah. have the best product in the market. Mm -hmm. So for you, you're in that early stage now, and Mike, you've gone through that, but still, you're gonna have to still do it. I have top business people who forget. They're doing like hundreds of thousands a month, and they still forget. And then they message me and say, yo, I just called up one of my clients, man. I, I did a deal, and I did, it in, I did a deal in front of my salespeople. Because the salespeople forget that they could do deals. Until the executive calls up the client, this is gonna to happen to you as well. You'll get your salespeople, they'll, they'll stop selling, all of a sudden you're like, who did you speak to? I spoke to this guy. Call up that guy live in front of the sales. I do this every Tuesday with my teams. I'll call up the guy live on the phone and show them how to fucking do it. And when I do it, everyone all of a sudden stops doing well that week. It's because it's, it's an energy thing. It's a yeah, thing. it is. Yeah. It's really weird the way that works, but it's just the way God made us, man. It's like human psychology. Mm -hmm. Focus. So we can talk about justifying price now and a few Perfect. techniques on how to do that. But David, yeah. David uh, before we move on uh, from the low ticket, high ticket, can we still go sure, on sure. that? So uh, this is uh, Will also, what's your view, uh, the, the edge bot, is it selling as a low ticket, mid ticket, high ticket, where, 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 how would you classify it? Well, I wouldn't really class it as high ticket or low ticket because it's mm -hmm. a subscription. Exactly. You know, so I think it's quite high subscription. It's three hundred and fifty dollars a month, um, and the churn has been pretty low, mm -hmm. in my opinion. The slip rate has been pretty high. Yeah. Right? Um, so it's not really a high ticket, low ticket product. Mm -hmm. It's more of a. I mean, the way that we're using it right now for us mm -hmm. is we're kind of inserting it on the back end, mm -hmm. which works very, very well, yeah. especially to customers. But if we didn't have WB trading and mm -hmm. we just had the edge bot. Mm -hmm. Then you'd be nervous. I'd be nervous. Yeah, <laughs> I'd be very nervous. But I would, I would package it in a way where I could sell it for a high ticket price. Mm -hmm. Whether that was with a course element, kind of learn how it works, mm -hmm. then use it. Mm -hmm. I'd probably add on some coaching to add value and make it worth the higher price because mm -hmm. we just struggle to sell it at a low ticket. I think and it just wouldn't work mm -hmm. as well. In, in my opinion, I'm sure mm -hmm. you can try to fight for both, but. Yeah. A way you might, you know, a way you might, well, I'm just trying to think how you'd actually do it. Mm. Um, I'm, I just came off that um, Perry Belcher's conference, yes. and I, as I said, I think I mentioned on day one, that he, he loves software as a service, as a free lead generator. Mm -hmm. he's, that, he's like, that's the mo he loves that model. Um, it might be something where you use uh, a mini version of it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as a free lead generator or something yeah. that helps traders, like a very simple thing. And then that's that's the upsell. Yeah. Like the immediate upsell, like, hey, I've got a bot that does this mechanical trading mm -hmm. X amount a month, so yeah. at least to get that initial purchase, you know. Then you won't need any phones, you won't need, mm -hmm. you know, that might yeah. work, may or may not. Yeah, because one of my concerns really is that most of the clients I've seen in uh, trading with it, they trade with such a low capital, capital. that mm -hmm. even if the bot does well, it kind of doesn't, it barely, co it covers the, the fee plus uh, some, some extra change. Yeah. But, but that, that's kind of my main concern with the, at least the, the majority of the client base that we currently have. Yeah, I think that's why you struggle to sell it as like a standalone mm -hmm. product. Because not only would people not have the knowledge on how it works, yeah. which I think is not, not great, mm -hmm. uh, but they come straight into it with low capital as well. Yes. So I'll get rich quick. Though. Yeah, it's as, just, as, like, as, it's just like someone saying, uh, I want to, like you said, it's yeah. the, it's quick as the timeline on it. Mm -hmm. like I think their capital is going to grow, then it's just going to keep compounding and growing and growing and growing. Yeah, it's a difficult one. I mean, you could sell it organically but you have to build a following first. Mm -hmm. With paid ads, it would be difficult. It would be difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's just it's just perfect as a back end. Perfect as a back end. So and the conversion rate as a customer is so high. It's that high because they come in. They mm -hmm. come in. They've seen what we have. Just they gain the value, and mm -hmm. then like any, if you yeah, give it the amount of back end option, like oh, I trust what I've just spent X amount of K for mm -hmm. three hundred dollars a month to give me X, another X, whatever. It makes sense. Also, what Charlie was saying as well about how people will buy man's course, and mm -hmm. even if they don't like it, they won't refund. Yeah. Because it's a back end, so people mm -hmm. come in and they like they like me, they like Paul, they mm -hmm. like Tom and Asbury, they have coaching call, yeah. they like this whole thing. Yes. Then they get that. Mm -hmm. So like even if they're low capital, mm -hmm. they're very likely to sustain it whilst they kind of get the capital to put in because mm -hmm. they 
they like us and trust us and yeah. respect us by then. Yeah. So. Well, can I ask a question? So you don't trade anymore. Do you not worry about staying valid for your clients? Because that's my big fear, is because I'm not doing outbound acquisition anymore, which is basically what we teach. I get, I get concerned that like, you lose that. Yeah, I'm like, can I do coaching? Can I coach people anymore? So I don't fucking do it, you know? Yeah, I do. Or is that because your ex, your ex thinks it doesn't really matter, I suppose? It is, it is a concern. It is a concern, but... Um, it can be applied to anything. Like, it can be applied to You don't do sales calls too much, right? Yeah, I have a little practice for myself, because every Tuesday I do the call, yeah, yeah, just a thingy, but I mean, it's, it's definitely a legitimate fear. Yeah, yeah. it is. Because yeah. I dread the day that someone asks me a question, and I'm like, oh, I don't actually know. I, I always like to think of like uh, Michael Jordan's coach or whatever, like or whoever's famous person. Like they don't do play basketball. Right? Mm-hmm. They, like you don't need to be in the field mm-hmm. always, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've done it. Yeah, you've, you've done, done it for it. so long. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you've mastered it, and you've, you've earned your stripes. Yeah, but, but the result is always not about email. That about email changes every two fucking. Yeah, but, but we would say there are some core principles that kind of stay oh, yeah, same, got, like the mindset have, and the paradigm. You've got nature and systems thinking, but like it's yeah. the technical. Well, I say it doesn't really move the needle that much. But, yeah. Yeah. but also without the mindset and the paradigm shift stuff, all the technical stuff doesn't matter, right? No. Like, so one thing, Charlie, I think that worked for me because I kind of went through that as well. Um, every time the industry would change, many chat became a thing. Well, Facebook yeah. ads stopped working. Then yeah. YouTube. So what I did to keep myself like, okay, I'm in tune with what's working and what isn't, so I felt confident over the phone and coaching and stuff like that, is I had my, my go-to guys, right? I had my go-to low ticket guy, yeah. I had my go-to cold email, and I would do regular check-ins with them and say, hey, what's changed? And they would kind of consult me, you know, like you, you, you teach your students, but your students teach you. Yeah, well, I've got one of my students who does our email, email stuff and appointment sites that you work with, and that's mine. And like, um, he does the coaching calls now mm. instead of me. Mm. And then if there's a question in the community, he answers it instead of me. So I suppose it makes sense. So you're good. So you're yeah, I know, but I just get I just get fearful of like, you know, losing the touch. Mm. Mm. What yeah, you're not gonna exit or anything, do you? Not for a bit. I mean to exit, I know it needs to be decentralized. Yeah. If it's Ch- if it's Charlie Morgan's coach then. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Well, you better fucking keep up with it, haven't you? <laughs> 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 to be quite honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you yeah, just check in with the guys and just keep keep up to date with like. Well, I've got a finger on the pulse, but I'm, yeah, yeah, that's good enough, man. Yeah, it's good enough. But most of it's paradigm anyway, and mindset. Yeah, I, I, think about it. I wanted to say that, but like, yeah. just yourself to you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll give you guys two examples of how to justify price. Two things that I did. Um, so there's a lot of different ways, but I'm going to go through a very practical one with you. So I had this challenge when I was a broker for HGV training courses. If anyone's British, that you know what that means. HGV. HGV. Yeah. CDL. H is a heavy goods vehicle. Yeah. Exactly. I used to broker the financing. Oh, okay. Right. So I had this challenge where we would sell it with financing at five thousand pounds. But then, like when I started early on, like twenty fourteen. I found out that you could buy the same shit down the street for like two thousand pounds, <laughs> right? And so you can imagine that took a very big hit yeah. on my like how I felt about what I was doing. So I'm like scamming people, this is that, and the other. So I had to figure a way to overcome that. And so what I did was I just ran the numbers and I tried to justify it as logically as I could that it was a better deal for other people. And I'll show you what I did. So this came with financing and this didn't. So the type of person that we were selling to was very low income, low low. Uh, no household income, they usually didn't have the 2,000 pounds. So that's first off the bat, if they wanted that, they would have to save money for like 12 months. Oops. They would have to save money for 12 months or more in order to get the 2,000 pounds. However, if they did it with us, and this person was typically making about 1,000 pounds a month, so nothing, and their expenses was like 1,000 pounds a month. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, well, if they do it with us, they have to pay 3,000 pounds more. So if we finance them to do it, all they have to do is pay 10 pounds up front, first of all. The training takes three months of time, and after three months, they'll get a job that pays them 2,500 to 3,000 pounds a month, right, of training. In that three month period, they would have paid 99 pounds a month. That means they only would have paid 300 pounds, 310 pounds in that whole three months training period. Then they would be making this much once they land a job and we help them land a job. I did everything I could to help them land a job. Because I had to, because mm-hmm. otherwise I didn't feel good about it. 
when they made this, they would be making two thousand pounds extra a month, or let's say at the very least they were making a thousand pounds extra a month. If it was a low, low, low entry job, and so this was my closing lines. I would, this is how I justified it, right? I had I had to figure this all out. I had to write it down every day. I would write it down. After I would show them this, I would make them write it down on a, on a pen or whatever, and I would ask them. So if you're making an extra thousand pounds a month, how, how long is it going to take you to pay off the loan? And then they would say, about four months. How long would it take you to get the license without the loan? Never. Mm -hmm. Right? So technically, they were making more money if they paid more, mm -hmm. right, than by doing it that. And so I want to show you guys this exercise because these are, you could do this in so many different ways. I'm going to give you another one right now. Let's say somebody came into up level. They already had the course. They already had all of this sorted out. And they didn't. But I'm sorry, I don't know what up level is. Up level consulting, the second course that we had. I don't know what it was. Yeah, but that's, uh, that, that's what I wanted to ask you earlier. Can you just summarize what are these four companies you work with? No, no, no. So, 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 so I'm talking about the um, yeah. consultant.com, the first company. Mm -hmm. I used to, I'm known for. Okay. Uh, up level was a program that we used to sell for five thousand eight hundred dollars. It's an online training business. Oh, as part of uh, consulting. Yes, company. correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So somebody would come on the call and. Um, they would only need one segment from the whole course, only one part of it. They had the ads sorted, they had everything sorted, they only need one thing. And so, you know, you get to the close and you're like, okay, so it's 5,800, right? You could easily, you could easily do, uh, use this line on anyone, really. And I had one segment that they wanted, for example, it was how to sell on social media. I, I made this uh, segment, it wasn't in the course. I made it just so I could change my belief system about the whole thing. Right, have you seen this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seen this? I remember you sending it to me like your, your module. People made courses out of that one. Oh, they they made really whole good. courses, yeah, they stole my shit. <laughs> 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 so it was a one hour video. I made it because I was trying to get over my own personal belief because we were saying to Charlie, things were changing. Yeah. Everyone was doing it on social media. I had to figure the social thing out. So I figured it out, I made a video, but that's the only thing they would want. And so if you just sold one, how much is your program? Oh, it's like 3,000. So how many people would you need to sell? in order for it to justify the cost of one one hour video. Just one. It's two. It's two. I, I could guarantee they would get two sales off that. And by the next day, they would have closed the deal by the next day, because I believe that they would believe it. So just a quick thing of how to justify price on the phone to people. There's also justifying price for your market. I mean, you can talk about that as well. Like for example, means how much do I charge? Mm -hmm. But this is a quick exercise for you, because if you speak to someone about intangible things, you have, to you have to figure a way to make it logical, more analytical. You have to. Yes. People, set people, people get excited on emotion, but they never, ever close on emotion. They only close logically, logically because there's an ROI. So that's a little exercise for you guys. Look at your offer and see what the return is, and try to kind of go through the exercise every now and again, because logically you'll be like, okay, they'll get this out of it. So next time you come on the phone, you'll feel a lot much better about it, right? You can also run this with your salespeople. If you guys have a sales team, run it with them and say, hey, look, man, if you guys are confused, all they have to do is do this to get this much money. So, yeah. I have. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, you said when you were selling up level, you had a lot of customers who only wanted like one part of the course, mm. right? So, uh, again, how, how did you uh, justify charging for a whole course if they just wanted, like, let's say it was six modules and they only wanted one module and they thought that they were good? Because I, I, I would look at the problem. Why do you want it? One simple question. So, yeah. so if we can solve this problem for you, yeah. get you to XYZ, is oh, that worth 5.8k? Yeah, yeah. Yes or no? Oh, okay. yes. Yeah. Done. Well, done. Or well, like, hey, 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 why do you want to solve that problem? You know, how long have you been having that problem for? If you solve that problem, what would it mean for your business? Or you, or whatever. And they say, oh, it would mean I would unlock X, Y, Z. Then it's going to be a struggle of if you believe your module is going to fix that or not. Yeah. But if you believe it's going to solve it, then it's pretty straightforward. Because I had that as well quite a lot where I, when I was selling a little bit of like, just one-on-one -on -one coaching for creatives who wanted to get clients, like, I would have this whole you know, plan, and they were like, oh, I only need help with the offer, right? I only need help with outreach. People only buy for one specific reason anyway, to be honest. Mm, yeah. But you have yeah. to be able to quantify it. That's why I was going through this exercise with mm. you guys. Because if you guys can't make sense of your pricing, but there's also uh, like a, this is, this is like very subjective to all of you, but there's also an objective thing, which is if you're trying to charge like to a business opportunity, 10K, like forget that, forget that. You have to have great financing like Charlie does. So there's also that, like, be reasonable. Mm -hmm. I've seen some coaches, like, jump on and say, why not charge 10K? What kind of fucking advice is that, man? <laughs> like, the market can't afford that. 
10x. Yeah, 10x, yeah, it's like stupid. <laughs> yeah. So there's also that side of it as well. I wanted to ask because um, this is where we at, or where I had where I lost my last sales guys. We made that massive jump with fitness as well. It's an emotional sale. There's no like ROI. How would you or and this would be for me in the future? How would I justify that price? You a to a new sales rep that's his first gig, or b to like someone else who's who's been in fitness and they know what the products cost out there. How would you justify like eight k to them? I think it. it First of all, I can't justify it. They have, to, they have to justify it. If they can't justify it, then you won't be able to close the deal. But like, what reasoning would you kind of take your sales team through to say, hey, 8K is actually cheap um, in terms of like what we're offering? Because I, that's what happened with our guy. He was like I'm super happy selling five. We went to eight. He didn't sell anyone that week. So, so like this is why people said hire somebody from your own team. So yeah, from, like from within, right? Because they know what the justification is, right, right? Right, right, I mean, maybe you know as well, but like it could be different for everyone. So mm. somebody might want to get in shape because they want to look good and I don't know, find it's the them. outcome they want, man. Yeah, so they their perfect partner, for example. Somebody want to look good so they can pick up a hot chick. How much is that hot chick worth to them? <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, like, True. like it could be worth everything to that person. Yeah. Well, I would you Josh know? when we went from five to eight. I had a one to, and I found out as like, oh, he wouldn't, he doesn't think about you. He thought there was a value gap. Like, yeah, oh. and yeah. then yeah. if. We figured out he didn't believe that we were talking. It was subconsciously he didn't believe it was eight K. So he wasn't delivering that price. Right? You have to right. find out why they want it, right? So it, it could be that it gives them more confidence. I'm just going through a few examples. If it's more confidence, confidence is priceless. Yeah. Like when what you feel more, confident in your more life. Confidence do for you? Yeah. What, what does more do confidence do for you? Yeah. Why do you want that? You know, like so. Um, you'd have to really like, and also it, it does come down to the type of person as well, because you're not selling eight K to someone who's can't afford a gym membership. Yeah. It also comes down to that as well. Some people, they justify it because it's executive. Someone like me would justify it because I know if I don't pay 8K, that might be my clothes. See why I'm saying everyone's different? Mm. You, you might come on a call with me and I'm trying to do a deal with you and you ask me, hey, you know, how, how would you make sense of paying $8,000 for a fitness course? I'm very like uh, pushy with it. Not pushy, I'm really, I'm really like, uh, I de-qualify a lot, I'm qualified. I'm like, how can you justify it when you could get the same thing down the street for a thousand? I will say that to someone. I will say that to someone because I need to prep. Because if they're thinking it, if they're thinking about it, they're not telling you you're in big trouble. Yeah. Right? If they're thinking I could do this, they're like, mm, I don't know, it's too much money. They get off the phone because you never asked them you could get it for cheaper, and that's what they were thinking. Mm -hmm. But if you were to ask it with me, I would say, because if I don't pay the 8K, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. That's me, though, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I said to you, like, it comes down to the person. Yeah. And even for you, Mark, like energy. How much does the energy cost for people? There's always there's always a logical reason, man. Yeah, you can break it down to productivity. How much is an hour of your time? Worth? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Do you believe I can get you these results? Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, like for for me, it wasn't it. Like like when I told Will that we're increasing the price, he was like, the only reason you won't sell is if you don't believe in it or your sales rep, which is exactly what happened. I did, and I closed. Mm -hmm. um, the, the thing, and this is why I'm thinking, okay, before I, we, we go down this rabbit hole with hiring people again, is do I even, do I take anyone to try and sell the 8K? Do I, do I go out there and look for sales reps and pay for reps to try and sell the 8K? Or do I just leave them to sell like a 5K, right? Because okay, so this is a recruitment question. Wait, what, you do, have you there? demonstrated you can sell as that? Again? Have you got call recording? Oh, you, plenty. Well, full that is daily, man. Full yeah, my, daily. That is my, fine. What? This is just, this might not be correct, but one thing that you, I'm hearing a lot, like a few times at this event, quite a few times when we speak, you keep saying, can a rep sell AK? Will a rep sell AK? Yeah, it's your belief system. Really it's because you've got you yeah, 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 yeah. a real start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't find a rep that's going to sell AK. You need to get rid of that that worry and doubt because if, if, if you've got that in your head when you hire an ex rep they want you to think ah. Mike, so, so Mike, Mike this is another you see the justifying price exercise you could do this with 10 reasons and I highly recommend you do that write down 10 reasons why 8k would be worth it and write down only what you believe or, okay. or you know I hate the word belief no one is better mm -hmm. Mike when you when you raised the price with that existing rep did you have doubt that you'd be able to sell it I've got one question yes yeah. yeah. so yeah. That's, that, that's the source of the problem because when you go to tell him yeah, you, your emotions right. will just transfer. Mike, I can ask you if if I could call you, you think I could sell? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I, I could sell. Where's your doubt? Okay. Where's your doubt? Because mm. I'm, I'm a sales guy. I can sell it. So what? There's doubt somewhere. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's just a belief, mate. It's just one thing you've got in your head, like ages ago. Yeah. Like, oh, rep couldn't close eight months. 
That's it. You just fixed that. And you just said I could. Or why? Yeah, I, I think I've just been unlucky in, with the uh, yeah saw. with the uh, reps. Is there, you've only had one rep so far. Right? Oh, we had <laughs> three. <laughs> three? No, I think we had like in total that we we had like five people in total. <laughs> this is Jason. Five, five. five. So Jason, Alex, oh, Joey, Joe, Josh, and, and Jackson. So we had five. They all with Jay as well. No one with Jay. Uh, when it comes to hiring, let me just say this because uh, I don't know, Will, if you want to move on if anyone wants to move on. No, carry on it, please. I'm looking at this. Right. Wait, David, real quick before you said 10, ten well, reasons. 10 reasons Can we why do your product is worth the price yeah. it is. Write those down. Ten, ten reasons to justify why you're charging what you're charging. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Logical yeah. reasons. Hmm? Yeah, logical reasons that you know are true. Could we pause for a quick coffee break? Yeah, yeah let's do that because I'm tired as well. Yeah. So, so, let's so we'll talk about the recruitment thing because I recruit all the time for my people. Thank you so much.